Okay, hi everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining today's webinar. ARIA EDGE promotes sustainable home ownership in the AAPI community. Our mission is to empower the next generation of future leaders and to help create their own wealth through real estate investing. In celebration of Women's History Month, we've brought together amazing women who will share their successes and failures in the real estate investing world from the West Coast to the East Coast. Today we have from San Francisco Bay Area, Julia, Ju, sorry, Julie Lan, CEO of Good Egg Investments and Brenda Chen, founder of Venus Ventures. From New Jersey, we have Tam Lei with INES Property Solutions. And from Houston, Texas, we have Mylene Pham, developer and a broker at Sovereign Real Estate Solutions. Before we start, we'd like to thank US Bank for the sponsorship and support in the AAPI community. We would like to share and play a short video and then we'll take it from there. Life is different these days, but that's not stopping us from living. Like spending quality time with family, supporting local small businesses and doing what's right to keep each other safe. At US Bank, we're doing our part to turn words into action. We're committed to investing in diverse communities by increasing grants and capital to support small businesses, housing, and workplace advancement. Together, we can create the momentum for positive change. Learn more at usbank.com slash action. Great. Okay, now we're ready to start. Julie Lam is a real estate investing expert with over a decade of real estate investing experience. Julie is the CEO of Good Egg Investments, a company that helps people invest passively in real estate syndications. Together with her business partner, sorry, together with her business partner, Annie Dickerson, they have helped hundreds of investors around the country to invest passively in commercial real estate assets in strong growing markets. Julie and Annie are authors of the book, Investing for Good, the surprising strategy for building wealth while also making an impact. Co-host of the podcast, The Life and Money Show, and creators of the Real Estate Accelerator, a top rated mentorship program designed to help people learn and how to scale and grow their private real estate investments. Please give a warm welcome to Julie with your silent claps. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Super excited to be here today, Ashley. Thank you so much for joining. Um, so, I mean, we already shared a little bit about you and your bio. Uh, maybe you could share a little bit about yourself, how you got into real estate investing. Yeah, absolutely. So I got started in real estate investing in 2009, and I was just doing the you know, traditional narrative of going out there and buying a home because that's what we're taught to do to build our wealth. And um, lucky for me and my husband, it was 2009. And here in the San Francisco Bay Area, it was a great time to be getting into real estate because prices were very, very low at that time and nobody was buying property. Um, and so uh, we ended up, we kind of got into that first property and saw the potential for real estate. We did the effective house hacking. Uh, we rented out the rooms and um, realized that we could have our um, you know roommates basically help us pay our debt down and we thought this is really interesting and so we started to buy more properties in 2009 and 10 um, and as the market cycle started to mature a little bit we started to think okay now that equity has kind of come back into the properties that we bought um, you know what's the next step for us and we thought like most people do is let's go out there and let's buy a bigger home and especially in the bay area you know you're looking at something especially if you have a family somewhere around you know two million dollars and so we started to kind of go down that route and as i sat there and um thought about buying this home i thought you know my i was sitting at my job that i was taking two to three hours a day to commute to and i thought if i buy this home i'm going to be sitting at this desk for the next 30 years of my life to pay off this home and hoping that one day i'll have the you know the dream retirement life that everybody talks about in 30 years if i make it there and something inside of me said that that wasn't the way to go and so we pulled out um, we were already pretty far down the loan process and we pulled out and i started researching and i discovered a a, a um, website that maybe some people have heard of called Bigger Pockets. And I fell into a rabbit hole of um, real estate investing. And people were talking about this novel idea of investing for cash flow. And I thought, this is really 
really interesting because when you invest here in the Bay Area, you're not investing for cash flow, you're investing for appreciation. And so I thought, wow, you know, I can invest and create cash flow and I can allow my money to work for me today and have it serve me in my life today and tomorrow and in the next year and two years instead of waiting for it to serve me in 30 years. And I thought, this is so interesting. And so I started investing in single family homes and smaller duplexes uh, out of state and um, was like, this is so amazing. I have cash flow coming in, but it wasn't without a lot of work, right? And if anybody knows who's gotten into real estate and you've bought a single family home or a rental property, you know that there's a lot of work that comes with landlording, sort of, you know, doing your due diligence, market selection, you know, finding the right property management team. There's a lot that goes into that. And so I got down the road a little bit and realized that I really wanted to be able to scale and go farther faster. And that's when I discovered multifamily investing and everything kind of changed for me after that um, and I did my I discovered multifamily syndication in 2016 after I had invested in a couple of um, single family homes and I probably did about like six to eight months worth of research because if anybody out there has heard of syndication and you know thought about getting into it you know that it's a pretty difficult thing to kind of break the barrier in terms of understanding how it works, who the players are, and all of that good stuff to trust, right? To hand over $100,000 or $50,000 or whatever it is. And so I took some time to really understand how does it work. And that's when I, the light bulb went on and it was like, you basically leverage the knowledge and the expertise of other groups and their time and you basically they leverage your capital and you collect a return and that's how i discovered syndications and did that in uh, my first one in 2017 and then met my business partner um in 2018 um but realized that i had the opportunity to kind of skip over and be active in real estate investing instead of just on the passive side and um in 2017 before I met my business partner, that was my first venture into um, the general partnership side of syndication and doing what we do now at Good Egg. Wow, that is a lot of information. And that's a yeah, I know. I was like, I'm going to pause there. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So, I mean, okay, so you mentioned that you met your business partner. And, I'm, and I know um, on this panel, we do have uh, a I think all of us, we do have business partners. So I'm wondering, you know, how were you able to discover your business partner and what traits are good qualities to look for in your business partner? Yeah, that's such a great question. So I met my business partner at a real estate investing conference and um, we were one of two, her and I, I think Asian women there at the conference. And um, we were like, we need to talk when we get there. And it's so funny because she lives in Oakland in, in the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area. I live in San Francisco, but we had to fly out to Denver to meet each other and sit down and have a conversation. Um, but that's where I met her. And it was at first we, you know, we didn't really even talk about partnerships. It was really just the common interest of what we were doing and why we were doing it. And really why we were doing it was because we wanted to help other moms and women and families discover passive investing. And um, it wasn't until we came back and um, realized that our strengths and weaknesses, and I think this is an important point to make, is that if, if, if you can really focus on what your strengths are and find someone whose you know, strengths offset your weaknesses and vice versa, that together you'll create a power team. And so when we sat down and she was talking all about how she loved um, marketing, if you go to our website, you see all of our web design and our marketing and, and you know, even this background that I have here now, she put together. And it was all the stuff that I did not like doing at all. And I had no experience doing, no business doing. Um, and she loved writing and blogging and creating video content. And that was not my strength strong suit and vice versa. The things I love to do were not the things she loved to do. And so we thought, hmm, we both have the same vision and we both have the same motives and we're both after the same thing and we have strengths that kind of offset each other's, maybe a partnership might make sense. And so that was kind of what opened the doors um, to that. So I would say to anybody out there, partnerships is such a key way that I've been able to you know, scale and grow, um, but anybody out there who's looking to get into real estate, really think about, focus on what your strengths are and go out there and don't try to find somebody who has the same strengths as you, find somebody who has strengths that offset yours, so. That's great advice. And that, that makes a lot of sense because I think a lot of us who always try to do everything, we think that we could do everything, you know, we forget that, okay, we are not the master of everything, right? So that, that that's a great point there. Um, and did you two, uh, 
did you face any challenges or hardships or failures throughout this entire journey? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, and first of all, getting into real estate syndication, you know, again, if anyone out there has looked into it, you'll know that in commercial real estate, I'm sure you know this as well, Ashley, it's a mostly male dominated field. Um, and so going into this, we already felt like we were kind of, you know, had something against us. So there, you know, absolutely were challenges. Um, but I would say kind of like our top three challenges that we had, um, and still, and this is the same for any business that's out there is marketing and growth. And how do we get our business name out there? How do we spread the word? How do we get other people to start talking about what we're doing? Um, and really we discovered that through creating a raving fan culture, that really that's how we've been able to find partners. That's how we get people reaching out to us. That's how we get investors to wanna to work with us is really focusing and kind of falling in love, so to speak, with who our um, you know avatar or how, who our ideal client is. And, and that's what we've done. And everything that we do, whether it's in our coaching program, whether it's, you know, with our investors, it's really always asking ourselves, like, what is it that people need from us? And what is it that they want from us? And how can we kind of deliver on that? And so um, that's, I would say, the, one of the ways that we've kind of um, faced that challenge. Um, I would say another one is, um, you know, trying to take something that is, like I said earlier, you know, syndication is a very dense topic. It's hard to, for most people, to kind of wrap their heads around how does it work and who are the players and all these things. So it's how do we take something that is traditionally very hard to explain and very hard to understand, and how do we kind of take it to a, on a level where pretty much anybody can understand what it is and how it works. And so that was a challenge that we faced that we overcame really by creating content. And so you know, if anybody out there is looking to build their business and you know you're dealing with a topic that's very difficult to understand figure out how you can you know make it very easy for people to consume anybody and that's true for any business if you can make people feel like anybody can do this that's how you get people to to say okay great i can do this too and it really gives them a feeling of you know that they're empowered um and then i would say the last thing is really building trust um you know when you're asking people to to hand over money it's a hard thing especially if you've never done it before um and so you know, we're kind of stepping into this field that where we have no experience um, and in an area that we've, you know, never, never raised a dollar before. <laughs> um, and so how do we build that trust and how do we build that credibility? Um, and I would say that, you know, the way that we did that earlier on, and this is again true for anybody who's trying to build a business and you don't have the experience, is go out there and leverage the experience of other people who have the track record um, before you and go out there and partner with them so that, you know, you kind of um, are using their, you know, their track record to as your own in a way. And that's what we had done earlier on. And, and we had personally invested with those people as well. Um, and so that was the kind of, I think the attraction was that we were the ones going out there and kind of being the, the guinea pig, so to speak. And we went out there and we said, hey, look, this is what we did. We've invested with these people first and we've had an amazing experience. And, um, you know, we're here to just share that experience and this partnership and open the door with you. And so that was really the beginning of, of you know, the where we started and then where we're at now. And, you know, now, like like we said earlier on, you know, we've worked with hundreds of investors and now we have a portfolio of 26 different properties across three, four different states. Um, but that, you know, took time in the beginning to build that build that trust and build that credibility. Now we're at the point where we're four years in and we're cycling out of deals. And so, you know, the whole the whole pitch of, hey, you can get a 8% return or a 16% annualized return is all coming to kind of fruition. And so now it's kind of an, you know, an automated thing. But again, earlier on, those were, you know, that was a huge challenge for us so wow that's <laughs> lots of information that's great and you know even and like you said um syndication syndication is not something that most people will understand and you know we have a lot of viewers here who are new new to investing and i'm sure you know they're wondering what is that exactly so maybe you could now <laughs> practice your talent and share with us yes. on an easy level as to what that is and you know maybe at that point we could get some of the investors to start investing as well on the on this um uh, webinar right now 
Yeah, yeah. So syndication kind of in a nutshell is a fancy word for crowdfunded real estate. That's essentially what it is. It's and most people know what crowdfunded real estate is. You've seen, you know, the different websites that they have Realty Mogul and similar ones like that where a bunch of people are going out to essentially buy a large apartment building. So that's what we're doing. Um and so uh let's say it's a 10 million dollar apartment building and you need, you know, 4 million dollars to buy it. And so let's say you know you've got i don't know a uh, hundred people or 50 people in that case i guess it would be all come in and put in fifty thousand dollars to buy the apartment together and so it's basically like a large partnership and so the syndication kind of has two um pieces of of the group so you've got one that's the general partnership and those are the people who run the investment they do all the work it's it's amazing and that's the this is the benefit and of, of being in a syndication you've got the general partnership who runs the deal and then you've got the limited partners who invest in the deal and typical kind of like splits of ownership is you've got 30 percent to the general partnership and 70 percent to the limited partners um, but that is in a nutshell is kind of what syndication is and and you know kind of you know who the players are and you know where you fit as an investor into the overall um, you know strategy and approach. Is there a minimum in order to invest with good egg investment? Yeah, that's a great question. So there is typically it's somewhere between twenty five thousand to fifty thousand. Um, and the other thing that I would say too that's typical within the industry, not just with us, but most um, of these types of invest investments require that that you are um, an accredited investor. And basically what that means is that you um, either as an individual earn $200,000 or more, or that jointly with your spouse, you earn $300,000 or more, or that your net worth is a million dollars or more. So, um, but generally that's kind of the, um, the, the requirements, but um, you know, you'll find that there are other groups out there that will take what they call non-accredited um, sophisticated investors. Meaning, you know, if you've got the sophistication, so if there's anybody out there who, you know, either owns a business or in, has invested in other types of real estate, but you don't meet the net worth requirement or the income requirement, there's a possibility you could still invest as well. Great, thank you. And so, okay, I mean, I know we're getting a little bit close to, you know, the time frame since we only have an hour to squeeze everything in. But um, yes. because we do have a lot of investors um, on this uh, webinar, we do want to ask. So, what advice would you leave the new generation of investors with? And how can you, yeah. and like, what words can you say to empower them to take the first step? You know, because it's always the first step that's the hardest. Yeah, so I wanted to quote a, um, Warren Buffett, and when I heard this, it so resonated with me and was really the thing that prompted me to get into what I do now. But his quote is that if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you'll work until you die. And when I read that, I realized that if I didn't find a way to create alternative income streams that didn't require my time, that I was going to work forever. <laughs> and I don't know about everybody else on this call, but I didn't want to work forever. And if I do work, I want to work because I want to, not because I have to. Um, and so, but, you know, doing that isn't always going to be easy. Finding ways to invest passively isn't always going to be easy. And so the piece of advice that I would give is that you've got to have persistence because in real estate investing, you're going to get get hit with all kinds of different obstacles and things and challenges and things that you have to overcome. And if you don't have the persistence to follow your dream and to continue pursuing what you want, you're not going to make it. And so I would say that, you know, you've got to believe in yourself and have that persistence to, to keep going. So, yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. And lastly, do you want to ask, since, you know, you mentioned that you got into um, this whole business without knowing anything and it was, you know, you're very new. Um, did you have any mentors or books that you uh, loved reading or that you would recommend? And I, and I know that you both are um, authors as well. So was there anything that can inspire you to move forward with this? Yes, yes. And I know this is kind of cliche, but I'll throw it out there anyway. Um, it's a little purple book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I read that book five years ago and I told my husband, and this was when he was commuting two hours a day and I was commuting two or three hours a day and I wouldn't see my kids until six o'clock at night. And, you know, I it was a dream and it was something that I never thought we would do. But we read that book five years ago. Actually, it was a little earlier, four and a half years ago. And I told my husband, I said, 
in five years, we're going to be both be retired and we're going to be, you know, traveling the world and living our dream. Um, but it, that and that's happened um, a little bit earlier because I think COVID kind of pushed us up. But I would say that, you know, in order to get the mindset sh mindset shift that you need to be able to do what we're talking about here, you've got to you got to talk with other people. And Rich Dad Poor Dad was such a great a great book to introduce that. Um, get out there, talk to as many people as you want. If anyone wants to reach out to me, I'm happy to talk with anyone. I love mentoring. I love coaching. I love inspiring and talking with other people. Um, go to meetups, talk with as many people as you can, um, and, you know, get out there and educate yourself. Bigger pockets, tons of tons of value um, on bigger pockets, um, lots of great books. The bigger pockets um, selection of books is great as well. Um, and their podcast line is something that I listened to in my commute for three hours a day um, and educated myself that way as well. So um, yeah, get out there, network and educate yourself. Wow, thank you so much, Julie. I really appreciate all the information. I'm sure everybody learned a lot. Uh, thank you so much for your time. We're going to move on to the next piece of our webinar series. And again, if you guys are, if anybody is interested in learning more, uh, feel free to reach out to Julie. We'll provide her information in the chat and we'll go from there. Thank, thank you. Julie. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was quite interesting. <laughs> I'm sure everybody really enjoyed that. And now we actually have another group of panelists um, that will be joining us and we'll ask a series, I will ask a series of questions and they will answer as needed. So uh, we have Brenda Chen, the head of sales for Conventus Lending, founder of Ven Venus Ventures and co-founder of SF Bay Area Real Estate Club. Uh, we also have Tam Lay, founder of Innes Property Solutions from New Jersey. Tam Lay is a woman who wears many hats, um, from leaving her stable accounting and finance jobs to a new career risk that have earned her and her husband's young company of five years, $15 million in gross sales for 23 rehab properties, including two brand new ground up constructions and $3.7 million in rental property values for a six figure yearly cash flow. She has a lot more to say, but I will leave it at that. And I'll, I'll rather have her explain a little bit more about herself. And um, of course, Mylene Pham, who is from Houston, Texas, broker of Solvin Real Estate Solutions. Mylene is a single mother to an 11 year old daughter who has been in the real estate industry for 13 years. As a sole financier for her daughter, financier for her daughter, she has endured many life challenges, but has acquired immense amounts of knowledge and understanding year after year. At the 10 year point, she sought to obtain her broker license in which she shortly after created her own boutique brand with a sense of personal touch and compassion for clients. More recently, she was invited to join a group of, develop, uh, group of developers designating her as one of the two managing partners of the company. She still considers herself green, but is motivated and very ambitious. So please give a warm welcome to our wonderful panelists. <laughs> Uh, with your silent claps. And um, okay, I guess we'll go into, uh, you know, I shared a little bit about all you three, but I would love for you to share a, more about yourself and elaborate. Um, I guess I'll start with Tab. Yes. Hi, thank, thank you for having me here. Um, of course. So <laughs> you want me to talk about myself a little bit? Just uh, a little bit more because I know you yes, have a very yeah, strong bio. I think got the, the, the first part of it pretty much. I. Uh, I've been in the corporate war and just uh, went after the kids, uh, having the kids, I just decided this time for me to move on and do something uh, that I can have uh, the time, the flexible time for the children and um, just jump into pretty much dive into real estate, uh, found my passion there. And um, up to this Point. Well, after five years, we have um, done business in multiple states right now. Um, Ohio, we are in Pennsylvania, Ohio, and New Jersey. Um, so it's 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 a it's not an easy journey. Um, but uh, we, uh, I mean, being a woman, definitely not something that um, easy for us in, in this industry. But uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. It's, it's just, um, just you have to keep going, keep moving forward. Of course. Look at this wonderful panel right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, now let's uh, jump into Brenda. Yeah, super honored to be here. Uh, super impressed by everybody. And thanks, Ashley, for inviting me. And thank you, Aria. So my name is Brenda. Um, I'm based out of San Francisco. I'm head of sales at Conventus Lending, which is a personalized financing for real estate investors. And that's how I got into real estate investing myself. 
Um, I founded Venus Ventures in March of 2020. And since then we've done three deals, um, all of them in San Jose. Uh, we're looking to expand um, all over the Bay Area and LA um, and across the US. You know, I'm super inspired by Tam here. Uh, I'm yeah, pretty new at this uh, on, on the investing side. Um, just happy to be here and share. And then also we host uh, real estate events as well through the SFA Real Estate Club. And Julie has been one of our awesome speakers on uh, multifamily syndication. So just really love networking with everybody and you know, also love attending ARIA events. Um, I love the community here and thanks for promoting women uh, through this event. Thanks for sharing, Brenda. Okay, Mylene, looking forward to hearing you speak. <laughs> Who are you and what do you do? I think you basically uh, told my whole life story there. <laughs> or I gave you my whole life story. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, I, I'm, I'm now a broker uh, here in Houston or here in Texas. I, um, and then I also do developments on the side. Um, they both compete with each other for my time. So uh, uh, in addition to my daughter. <laughs> um, it's, it's definitely somewhat of a challenge being uh, a female in uh, in this world sometimes uh, this business world because you're sometimes feeling like you have to prove yourself a little bit more or prove your experience um, prove your knowledge um, so I, I totally get it and I, I definitely appreciate um, this entire panel um, for sharing their knowledge and just you know being who you are um, in addition to that uh, being I, I've been doing development for um, I've been part of the development company for under a year. Um, they've done multiple developments without me or projects without me. And then they invited me this past year because of my knowledge in real estate. Um, and then because of my friendship with them previous to prior to that. So I was really lucky. And um, from there I kept proving myself to my two uh, male counters to make sure that they understood that, you know, I kind of might know what I'm talking about at a times. <laughs> um, it's been great. They, we all have like this symbiotic relationship now where um, we all consult with each other before we pick a different tile or we change plumbers or any little thing we, we consult each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Miley. <laughs> That's awesome. And I, and, you know, we all could definitely understand how challenging it is to be a woman in a predominantly, uh, let's say, dominate, male dominated industry, not necessarily saying realtors, right? But even when it comes down to clientele and investing and everything, there's many factors involved. So, so glad to have everyone here. <laughs> all right. So let's go into how everyone got to real estate. I mean, my lean, you already shared a bit, but I'm curious with Tam, um, you know, like you left your accounting finance job to go into real estate. And, you know, how did you get the strength to walk away from such a stable career and just jump into such a high risk type of, you know, lifestyle? Well, like I had mentioned that um, after I have my kids, our kids uh, just find in that coming home at 10 o'clock at night doesn't work for me anymore. And um, just one day I listen and I'm pretty sure some of you have heard of Fortune Builders. Uh, I had listened to the um, infomercial and decided to sign up uh, to listen to, to go to that one free hour event and then go to the next three days event and it just kind of got hooked and found that um, this is something that I definitely want to do um, and build my own business from there. So, um, and once I am in, I realized that I actually have some hidden talents in this uh, <laughs> real estate investing that I never would have known if had, I had didn't, uh, didn't take that um, leap of faith and start investing. So, right, and now um, you, you Oh, sorry, ahead. but now you've grown it into a multi-million dollar revenue generating cash flow business. Um, and how, like, what type of challenges did you have with that? If well, any? in the beginning, definitely, I started out with a uh, fix and flip. Um, and it definitely, when someone come to me, uh, when I went to meet with a contractor, the first thing they looked at me was actually they looked over 
behind me and say, where's your husband? And <laughs> that was the challenge. Um, pretty much they just didn't think that a woman can be out there and doing um, this, this business period. And uh, some of them very old fashioned that they don't even, pretty much they didn't feel like they, they could talk to me. Uh, and, and some uh, actually felt like, uh, you know, you don't know what I'm, you're talking about, but like Mylene has said earlier, you, you, the big surprise, right? That um, we, we do know a lot more than we, uh, we probably show. And I just have, and then after that, we just have to show the confidence and show, show them that, hey, we do know what we're talking about and we're here to do business and you will be um, surprised how much of the, um, you know, the, the respect they would have for you. Um, and that's, that's the beginning challenge. But after that, we have been able to build our, uh, our team. And, and I think that's, that's so, also important to help with our business is building that team that we can trust and um, do the work for you um, the right way. Um, so that's that's pretty. My challenge was in the very beginning, and still, you know, every day you you found some other challenges, as far as yeah, you you learn as you go, and uh, those challenge, um, you know, you just continue. It's going to be become the lesson for you to learn and grow. Um, for me, uh, also other challenges to deal with the inspectors and you know those normal things that you you do like the contract the the, the inspectors and um after that I, we have um dive also going into the rental business where now our new challenge is the uh, the uh, the renters you know how we're going to do with the the renters and um just continue, continue. Every challenge is, is again, a learning lesson for us. And, and with all your tenants, do you and your husband, do you manage, do you to manage it yourself or do you have a, a outside company manager for you? Currently we manage them ourselves. Um, I have, uh, you know, we, we have, I have, we have a wonderful assistant that's out there uh, doing all these phone calls and, and take care of tenants. And we have been very proud, uh, fairly new in the uh, rental um, business, but we, uh, many times we got uh, praised that how professional we were, um, we are dealing with the tenants. But eventually uh, we, once, we also get into the multifamily apartment. And uh, that is when we will have to get a management company to come in and help us out with that. But right now we're doing it all ourselves. And a lot of it is online. We build teams out in where in Ohio, like we have Ohio, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. We have our own maintenance team. If once the, te the tenants have any requests, maintenance requests, send it to us online and we send our maintenance people out there and do the maintenance. And, you know, like, when you started investing in the beginning, what, what, how much capital did you need to invest? Just curious since we have so many uh, new investors. Believe it or not, um, cap, capital, you, um, I, I always test, tell other people in the beginning, I, I, I didn't think of that, but, um, you don't need much. Once you have a good deal, your number works, people will want to lend to you. Hard money lender, private lender, whoever that is. Once everybody, that's, that's I think that's the what they scare the most when we start investing, where am I gonna find the money? And that's, uh, that's was my, 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 my fear as well. Like, where am I gonna find the money to buy these properties? But once the, 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 the things is when we found out that once your deal works, when your number works, they will, their people will come to you and lend to you. So That's great don't, 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 don't let the fear stop in us, um, stopping you from, from investing. 
Great. Thanks, Tam. How about Brenda? You know, going into hard money lending and all that, <laughs> that's also one of your uh, many skills. So why don't you uh, touch upon a couple of these subjects? Like what triggered you to go into real estate? Were there any challenges? And well, maybe you could touch upon a bit uh, with the lending side. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I started in real estate in 2017. So uh, almost four years ago, and I knew nothing about real estate. And so I kind of learned everything on the job. Um, I was I was uh, lending. Um, and then I never thought it was for me, like the first three years, I did nothing in investing because I was super intimidated. Um, I, I was networking a lot, but I always felt like, you know, all these investors, they're all talking about their projects, but I didn't have anything, but I still kept going. Um, you know, I decided, oh, I want to add value, even though I don't have any projects, I'm going to host events. And so, you know, I even remember, like, I was reaching out to people on Bigger Pockets, and I saw Julie's bio, and I was like, oh, my gosh, she's so amazing. Like, I want to be like her. So just meeting people like that, um, I think, you know, slowly, it got me more comfortable with it. But um, it still took me three years to finally make the leap. And when I did, I realized, like, wow, it wasn't as scary as I thought because I you know had done all this work and it was just my self-belief at that point so I remember I think the final trigger was um me watching Elisa Covington's YouTube video she's also an investor and she's you know a woman and I was one thing just you know popped in my head like if she can do it maybe I can do it and so I just decided to take action from there and found the two deals and partnered with her and so it just came from there but I think it's really important that you guys are showcasing women like this because I think I related to her a lot and she really inspired me. And so you never know who you can inspire. And, you know, being in lending, I realized like 99% of my clients were men or, you know, uh, even if they're a woman, like they're partnering with a man. So it's pretty unique to see a woman do it by herself. And so I think it's really great to see people here on this panel and um, you know, I think there are, we're inspiring a lot more women to go into real, real estate investing. I think that's more, uh, super important to balance it out. Thanks, yeah. Brenda. And <laughs> on the lending side, when you identify a deal, like how does that structure work? Yeah, like definitely. What, what are you looking for, you know, um, especially for all the newer investors on here, you know, so they know oh, how to prepare yeah. and, you know, what was needed. Yeah, definitely. So as a lender, you're typically um, conservative. And so as an investor, you also want to be conservative and make sure you do your due diligence. So making sure the property value is ideally you get under market value, but at least your value has to come back at or above the purchase price. And then you're um, checking out, you know, how much it's going to cost to fix it up. It's, if it's a flip or, um, you know, how much you can raise the rent if it's a rental and then what the property is going to be worth afterwards. Um, and then if you're refinancing, you know, uh, making sure that the takeout lender, you're, you qualify for those loans. And then for flips, um, checking out the after repair values um, in the area and the most you know, recently sold ones are the best um, with similar condition and square footage, et cetera. So um, yeah, just making sure the numbers are, you're being conservative on. It's not, you know, the one-off property that sold like, um, 200k above everything else that's similar but you know what's what's average and what what can you realistically expect great thanks Brenda and how yeah. about you Miley <laughs> anything you can share as to um, you know your uh, real estate knowledge and also you know how do you assess a good investment versus bad and maybe you can share a bit about your market as we're all in different markets here <laughs> on the panel <laughs> Um, well, I, I don't know if you've heard, the market in Texas has been quite amazing. Um, more so in Austin than Houston, but in Houston, there's that ripple effect. All the companies are moving, the major corporations are moving their warehouses down here. We don't have, um, we don't get taxed the same as you guys do, even though our property tax is higher, um, a lot of it is deductible um, or you can write some of it off. Um, as far as investments are concerned, it, it's really just gauging the areas and knowing, um, understanding the patterns of, okay, what areas are going to be hit by the ripple effect, right? So here, a lot of people like to be um, either in central or there's, you follow the schools. Um, people typically follow the good schools. And if it's in town, then the convenience of accessing, accessing the 
major thoroughfares, the freeways um, to get where you need to go. Because here, anywhere you want to go, it's 30 minutes. <laughs> um, uh, just like Julie and Tam, and basically everyone's saying is persistence is, is key. Um, it's hard to come by good contractors. And even if you come across good contracted or good contractors within companies, there's no guarantee that when they come back out, they're, they're bringing a, a, the exact same crew out that they had brought out last time that did a good job. Um, sometimes they might have an off day, just like you know that favorite restaurant you go to as well. So um, it, there's a lot of persistence, staying on top of people, um, trying to stay on top of a lot of different things. <laughs> Just making sure that you uh, you level out the playing field and that you kill all the fires right at this point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that you're right. prepared for whatever that's going to come up next. <laughs> yeah, I mean, things happen. It's life, right? You get thrown curveballs all the time. It's just taking it one day at a time and making sure you can work your way through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, for <laughs> sure. So, okay, were there any challenges or any failures within any of you guys on the panel right now, you ladies on the panel right now. Yes. Like with any investment project, was there any like bad investment deal that you did where you thought you were gonna get X amount of money and then it turns out that you like barely broke even or you were even negative? Was there ever Absolutely. like something like that happened? Absolutely. Yes, okay. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'd love I to hear about that. Like I did, I, we did have this, this loss that uh, we, we had on a couple of our projects. Um, but the thing with this is for us, again, it's a lesson learned. Um, we, we, it, it's, it's part of the business. And for, for us always that even though we lost, everybody's gain because it's like our investors invest in us. They still get their money back. Um, our, our contractors, they work hard for, for their money. They, they still get pay. Um, it's, it's just uh, the, the, the way we, we create our relationship with them. We we have laws, but there's nobody's fault but ours. It's, there's delay in the 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 process, delay in the um, inspections and things like that. There's unforeseen things that that happens, and that yes, there was a couple properties that were one we lost and one we broke even. But other than that. Um, you know, we we happy to say that we we doing well on um, with with our properties, but it's just again, it's it's part of the business. There's gain and there's loss. Mm -hmm. No, that's that's great insight because you know, like everyone when when they hear developer or flipper, automatically you think, oh, the glass. Right? Always <laughs> rosy for sure. Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's good to know. How about you, Miley? What Were there anything that um, you've witnessed yet or seen? Maybe not within yourself, but even with like your clients. Yeah. I mean, I think that glam comes into a real estate agent, right? Everyone's like, I'm going to get a real estate license. I, I don't get to, I don't have to work as much. And then they come in, they're like, oh, I have to put in work. <laughs> um, I, I've come across a lot of agents uh, that, 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 you know, they, they tell me they're, they're wanting to get their license. And then later on, they're like, oh, how do I, how do I do this? How do I do that? How do I get more leads? How do I get more clients? And I'm like, you go out there, you, you basically sit in the lobby at an apartment complex and wait for clients to come by <laughs> or, you know, you just have to be a go-getter. Um, the, the challenges with uh, development is that lumber is uh, there. It's gone up in price like 30%. Or no, over thirty percent. Uh, about thirty thousand dollars a house, um, and so it's been a challenge because some of the property or companies here they'll only sell to their major accounts, which is like the houses or the developers that are nationwide versus us. <laughs> um, in addition to that, finding um, banks that we can build that relationship with, where we can continually buy land that's big enough for our developments. And then have them do construction loans later, and then, you know, constantly working with that, um, handling the accounting finance side. It's just um, a lot of different moving parts on on all the aspects. Um, 
I don't know how it's like in Houston, but over here, you know, like in the San Francisco, especially San Francisco, I'm sure Julie and Brenda will agree with this, is it's really hard to push uh, through permits and building permits and planning and fire and all that. Is, is it like that out there in your area, Tam and Mylene? You can go first, Tam. <laughs> oh, go, go ahead. Well, for, for us, sorry, for us, uh, depends on the county that we're in, or it depends on the city or town that we uh, we develop or we build. Um, it's uh, pretty much is is difficult. I think the most difficult thing right uh, right now for us is finding a good deals. Finding good deals is so difficult. Um, so right now that's that is the challenge for us. As far as the building, we we just do what we have. We are already in the business long enough. We know what they require and what, what needs to be done. We have a team of architects that are, you know, who, who keep update with the codes and the building uh, inspection uh, inspectors. And so it's is just that's something that we do have to go through pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, we don't uh, for for me, let's say it's just the deals. Getting finding a good deals are just extremely difficult right now. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, I, I mean, for sure, especially because you're uh, very seasoned um, in what you do, and th that's usually the case. And I'm thinking, so is it fair to say for all these new investors, that's very important to form a really good team around you, right? Such as like an architect, the lender, the investor, if there is one, right? So, I, and even right. like maybe a project company. manager. Mm -hmm. Right, title company, right? So um, I guess like, would you, what would you, what type of advice would you give for the newer developers and flippers? Like, you know, what, what should they look out for? Just form a really good team. <laughs> uh, for me, you have a question for me? Yes, it's just, um, is it from my question for me? <laughs> the question for me? Go yeah. ahead, is this for, it's uh, open for all right no, now. <laughs> so, yeah, the team would definitely be, uh, yes, you do want to form a great team uh, around you because no man is an island. You can't do it all by yourself. And um, it's like, you know, you had mentioned architect, contractors, um, title company attorneys, you definitely would, would want to have a good attorney as well to be on your team. Um, you have need your own accountant to who knows your the real estate investment um, to to help you out with with anything real estate related. Um, and I I just like building looking for people and then looking for recommendations. You you know you networking. I, I think a lot of us have mentioned before go out and network. And that's where you find your resources and, and recommendations from people who've been there before. Like, just like, I'm more than happy if anybody on the, you know, that's listening in that is in um, our area in Northern Jersey, if anybody ever need any recommendation or resources, please reach out to me. I'm more than happy to, to, to offer and to share with, with them my, our resources um, because we've been working them, with them for several years now. So we know who, who's who. Um, so this way, if, if there's something that, you know, and that's, that's what it is. Like when I started, I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to do? You know, it's just, uh, where am I going to find the plumber, the contractor, the electrician, and, and these people, like, how, how do I know whether they're good or not and things like that. And the only thing we, we do is just, all right, we, we know the other investors, uh, I met with other investors and they say, oh, they recommend um, these contractors or architects to us and just networking is the key networking is definitely is the key to an investment and unfortunately with COVID we can't go out and hang out and go to these area events and things like that but like this we have zoom um thank god for zoom right <laughs> so this one we, we can still network in in a different way but networking is the key to invest in that's in my opinion and I'm sure the you ladies can concur. Yes. Yeah. Great. Thank you. How about you, Brenda? How how do you feel about um, the whole situation? And um, are, is there anything in particular that you use to network with everyone to find deals? Yeah, that's a great question. So I actually met my business partner also at an event. Um, 
you know, back then everyone was pitching haves and wants. And so you never know who you can meet, you know, at events like this one, uh, you know, just we connected afterwards, uh, we met, but then we connected afterwards and it was through there that we developed a relationship. And um, yeah, I've been hosting events, you know, more than a hundred events uh, in the past few years. And I think that and et cetera. Um, and as far as team, um, definitely need a good business partner because I'm I'm on the newer side. So I found the deal, but um, you know, it was, I couldn't have done it on my own. And uh, you know, um, I think it's it, it was great for me to kind of see how it, it's all done. And uh, one kind of regret I have is not starting earlier because I thought, oh, I need to do everything myself. Um, but I could have actually used the same strategy and found the deals um, three years ago or four years ago. And it was just um, building my confidence up. And so, um, yeah, we, we found the deals through realtors, actually. So realtors are a super great resource. Um, we've built a list and cultivated relationships with them. And so, um, yeah, just, you know, finding solution for uh, these property owners that want to sell quickly. And, um, yeah, so I would say... I wish I jumped in earlier and, and uh, had that co confidence because I saw people that were attending these meetups, but they were investing without, you know, you know, being at these events for very long, whereas I was the one hosting and I still didn't do any projects until last year. So, um, yeah, <laughs> that's one piece mm -hmm. of advice I have for newer investors. Thank you for sharing that. And also um, to uh, follow that, you mentioned that you got good deals from the realtors. So when these realtors presented the deals to you, I'm assuming you had to do your own assessment, right? To make sure that it was going yeah. to pencil out the way it was supposed to. So how were you, how did you assess that? Because a lot of people who are not in real estate, they wouldn't know where to start. Yeah, that's a good question. So you know, that's why I, I stress on the importance of partners, because both my partners have had, you know, 20 plus projects. Um, and so they, they know what to look for. So we did the, you know, they, we did the walkthrough together and um, assess, you know, the condition, you know, if there's foundational issues um, or like big ticket items, like the roof or something, and then um, look at recently sold comps in the area. So um, ideally within the last six months and, you know, just looking at where the market is going and then also getting, uh, getting uh, advice from realtors, because even if you're in the Bay Area, you don't necessarily know the neighborhood or even the street. So, you know, on the lending side, we see a lot of this too, where um, we had the client with a project in, in Rinda, but they lived in the Bay Area, but not in Rinda. But, you know, they were interviewing uh, with the realtors there and the realtors told them like, this street is not good because it's right next to the freeway. Like it's not as desirable. And they had no idea um, you know, when they bought the property. So it's really important to network, especially in the sub markets that you're interested in. And then um, to do your diligence, you know, by talking to uh, experienced investors, like the people on this panel, um, you know, and uh, get their advice. And um, Elisa, who I worked with, she said that, you know, one of her first deals, she had, um, she got advice from her mentor and then gave him a split of the profit just for giving her advice. So, you know, it can really make or break your deal by the little things that you don't know to look for, you know, whether it's the garage or, you know, whether the house is um, uh, not typical of the area or, or what people are looking for. So, yeah, I think like Tam said, just, you know, networking as much as you can and learn as much as you can and then build the confidence to, to take the leap. Great. Thanks, Brenda. And of course, yeah. with that, with realtors, you want to make sure that you find one that's very experienced and that mm -hmm. does actually know what they're doing, because we all know that we know so many realtors, right? Everybody's a realtor, but you just can't pick anyone. You got to make sure that they are actually very, very seasoned and know what they're doing. And the only way that they actually know what they're doing is either if they're an investor themselves or if they are just an expert in their market. That's something that I've learned too. Because when I first started real estate, when I didn't even invest into real estate yet, I, I have to admit, I really didn't know anything, you know, I had to slowly go through everything and learn and study to actually become an expert in what I do now. <laughs> um, so Mylene, Going to you, I mean, I know that at first you were, you wanted to speak about it too briefly. Um, 
how about you? How did you find your team and your uh, partners? I, my my partners found me um, in development oh. in real estate. I I'm actually a one one woman band. <laughs> I like um, you're your own broker. I'm I'm the broker, and then I have my agents that are under me. They sought me um, after working with me. <laughs> So I, I was kind of very lucky in that. Um, and I, I'm i afraid of liabilities. So they're, they're very seasoned and they know what they're doing. Um, and I've worked with, it, it, like you said, there are real estate agents that are that will do their due diligence and will work for their client, uh, do all the research that's needed, everything. And then there are people who, um, and that's with anything in life, right? There, there's people who are go-getters, and there are people who are better at other things. So, um, so with real estate, I'm I'm a broker by myself, and with the developments, my partner, my now partner, has found me. Um, I I was friends with them back then. And I used to help them um, provide them with advice on real estate for anything. Um, they came across a deal more recently, uh, and they were actually. Um, about to get cut out of the deal unknowingly. So they were feeding across cash wires to this third party person to get the land from him. He was a land broker, but he never transferred the name of the, the property or the, the contract to uh, their name. So he just kept it under his name. Um, me being OCD as I am and the friend that I am, I was like, let me read the contract anyways. So I did. And I discovered that I said, Hey, you guys are just giving him money. It, the, the contract's not showing that's going to be conveyed to you. It's still going to be conveyed to him. We need this to be remedied before you send them more money because you're, you're at the end of the day, you can just lose it. Um, and so from there, the other guy hated me, still does, <laughs> but he now has a reputation in Houston. Um, he has a huge reputation in Houston across contractors, across a lot of people. Um, so just be careful who you work with. Make sure you definitely form a good team. Um, good relationships are extremely important. Like if it wasn't for my relationships, I don't think I'd be where I am in life and be able to take care of my daughter. Um, very lucky with that. Um, I mean, Everything you do, every choice you make, it there's there's always a reaction to it, right? So uh, just just be cognizant of that, right? <laughs> Thanks, Miley. Okay, we're cutting it pretty close to where we should get to. So I think uh, one major thing that I do want to leave everyone with is for all the new investors and future investors that um, are watching, what advice can you leave them with to take the first step? I can start. Um, I would say um, if you see someone who's investing that is inspiring to you, know that if they can do it, you can do it too. And that it's possible for you. So don't count yourself out, you know, whether you're young or you're not experienced or you feel like you don't understand real estate, just know that you can do it. And then, you know, if you want it, you can make it happen. Love that. Thanks, Brenda. How about Tam, my name, <laughs> Julie, you could definitely chime in as well, but I know you already answered a little bit. <laughs> I would say, uh, don't be afraid to ask questions. So this very day, I'll ask questions that I probably already know the answer to. I still ask it anyways, um, just so I could have that, I guess, confirmation that it's not that I need the affirmation. It's just so you can get other people's perspectives and understand, okay, maybe they have something that you don't know or have some advice that you don't know. So I always ask questions, even if it's uh, repetitive. <laughs> For sure, this is very important. Hi, Tam. Hi, and um, just, just to follow up on that, Mylene, what Mali had just said, just take every opportunity to, uh, to learn from everyone that you met. And um, take that leap of faith, you know, jump and take, take the risk. You know, sometimes our fear is what holding us back. Uh, go do it. Just, just got to do it. Don't, don't, don't be, you know, you, you're going to be afraid. And then we are our worst enemy. Um, we just afraid and don't take that, 
that jump, then you're just gonna be where you are. Just you stay, you're still gonna stay where, where you are, not where you wanna be. Okay. Did you wanna add to anything, Julie? Yeah, I guess the only other thing I would say is just make sure that um, you find a coach. And I think, you know, I think Brenda had mentioned that um, and um, that her partner had done that. And that was something that I did earlier on. And the way I see it is you're either going to spend, you know, 30,000 or 10,000 and you're going to, you could, could not that you would, but you could make a mistake. Right. And we all, a mistake is only a mistake if we don't learn from it, or you could spend that 15,000 or 10,000 or whatever it is, or nothing at all. And you exchange value for that relationship, that mentor relationship. Um, and you get a ton of value and you learn all the things that you don't need to do. Um, and so it just cuts your learning curve down like this. Um, and, and that's what I did. I still, to this day, and I look at it, I don't look at it as spending on a coach, I look at it as investing in myself. And all the lessons that I've learned from people who have gone before me are things that I now know that I have ingested and taken in and I now experience as my own experiences is invaluable. And so if anyone out there is thinking about, you know, hey, I want to get into this, look at interview a ton of mentors, interview a ton of coaches, talk to people, even if it's not a paid relationship, see how you can add value because it's gonna save you a ton of time and also give you the confidence that you need to be able to get out there and do and do it, you know, so, yeah. Thanks for that, Julie. Yeah, no, I mean, I think at the end of the day, like one thing that I've learned, especially as I started getting older, I mean, although I'm still pretty young, but after like 25 years old, I just realized that time is flying by so fast. Like even right now, we're ready in what, approach Q2, right? It's already ending. And like it, every day, you know, I'm looking at my schedule. It's like, okay, wake up and then, you know, you work and then the kids and then I'll work and then you clean. And, and then at the end of the day, it's like, wait, where did the whole day go? And then it's the end of the week and then it's the end of the month. So with that said, it's just, you know, if you have any goals set for yourself, just take the first step and take that leap of faith. Like everybody said, you have to do it because at, we, all we have right now is time, you know, and, and what we don't have is time. So we need to be able to capture it and spend it wisely. So if you are even have a little bit of, um, you know, desire to do this, I would highly encourage you to just jump and do it because if everyone here could do it and anyone else that you know could do it, you could definitely do it too. Like Nike always says, just do it, right? <laughs> so with that said, I want to say um, thank you to everybody for participating. Thank you to our panelists and speakers. That was great. Thank you to our sponsors. Thank you to Aria National. Thank you to everyone. And um, I would like to leave all of you with a little bit of something in light of all the hate crimes. We like to leave everyone with a message, right? We're all in this together. Spread love and positivity, not the opposite. If we see anyone in need or help, regardless of gender, age, ethnicity, or background, we will stand up to help. A very wise person once told me, it's so easy to be good, but it's so hard to be bad. Why not make life here in this lifetime enjoyable and be good? Kindness is contagious. Together we stand, we got this, stay strong. So let's help continue supporting each other. We're in this together. Thank you so much for everyone's time. I hope you learned a lot of great information and we're looking forward to seeing you all again in our next webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you everyone.